Holy Hannah. Okay. Jeez, it is windy outside. But uh, not in here, thankfully. You join me inside the 2020 Lamborghini Urus. And I'm going to do my very best to forget everything I've heard about this vehicle, good or bad, so I can come to my own conclusions because I am genuinely excited to drive it. I've been excited to drive it since I saw it debut in 2018. And for some reason or another, scheduling and so on, uh, I have not found my way behind the wheel, but I'm here today, I'm here now. And that means I'm gonna stack it up against other super SUVs like the Aston Martin DBX and the Bentley Bentayga Speed and the Porsche Cayenne Turbo and the Audi RS Q8 and the BMW X5 M Competition and the Mercedes AMG GLE 63S. You can see there's a lot of them, but I'm gonna do my best to see how it stacks up in terms of styling, in terms of driving dynamics, uh, how it makes you feel, and if I can even say it, value. So that is today on miles per hour. And there it is, the 2020 Lamborghini Urus, which is actually how it's pronounced. I learned that because I've been pronouncing it wrong all this time. I was saying Urus, and Urus ain't right. It's Urus. Even that pronunciation is probably not perfectly well done. Don't hate me Italians. Not trying to butcher it on purpose. This one right here is painted Blue Helios. It's got some metallic flake to it, but it's a gray day, so it's hard to see. And that is a free paint color on a $200,000 plus car. You get that paint job for free. Always fun. Now, before I get too deep into this review, a couple quick things for you. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing so, because when you do that, You'll get access to daily car videos. I've got POV day drives, POV night drives, live Q and A's and reviews like this one. You don't want to miss out on any of that. So hit subscribe and tap the bell to get notified. Also, if you like the content we do put out, you've been following for a while, you want to support us. You can do so as easily as liking, commenting and sharing this video, or you could get some miles per hour merchandise like a t-shirt, or sticker, or you become a patron on our Patreon account, different perks, all just supporting the channel. And with that said, let's dive right back in to the Urus. So a Lamborghini SUV. Yes, this is not the first model year. In fact, you know, 2021s are starting to come out and I'll point out right here that the only changes for 2021 is that you're gonna get some new wild paint color options, 23 inch wheels instead of 22s is standard, some adaptive safety features is standard, and the price is gonna go up $10,000. So that's the only thing you're gonna see different between 2020, this one here, and 21s. But a Lamborghini SUV, is this how you envisioned a Lamborghini supercar in SUV form? That's the question I kept asking myself as I've spent some time Honestly, like just spending some time walking around this car, I've done quite a bit of it. My conclusion is this. One, I don't think I like this car in a color. White with black wheels or all black is how I would go with this vehicle. It's just, I think the geometry, the presence goes really well in more subdued paint color, but with your eyes just being attracted to the lines and the aggression of the vehicle without the color being the thing that's the standout. That's how I would do it. Now getting back to the actual design of the vehicle, so many shapes, so many geometric forms on this vehicle, so sharp. They're, Lamborghini doesn't do smooth flow. There's no flow to Lamborghini. It's all aggression and angles and power and punch in your face and that. So that's that's how it comes across with the Urus. Let's just put it that way. We've got these standard LED adaptive headlights with that splitting Y pattern over there that we're going to see in a few other places on the vehicle. These forks in the front air intakes. They are functional. Not the forks. I don't think you're going to break those off and go to dinner, but uh, the air intakes are functional. That same pattern 
up in there with the Ys. And then we've got carbon fiber, lots of carbon fiber on this model right here, and it's all optional. There are two carbon fiber exterior packages. They call it, they break it up on the options list as this, carbon fiber upper and carbon fiber lower. This has both carbon fiber upper and lower, which means it has an extra $22,000 just in carbon fiber pieces. I'll point out the carbon fiber bits I like and the parts I don't. Down here, the front splitter, I do like in carbon fiber. I like these little winglets here, these accents. Those are nice. Again, just on a, you know, all black with the black gloss would look good or white with the black gloss. But uh, yeah, this blue and carbon fiber doesn't do it for me. But if you just want carbon fiber, I like the front splitter in carbon. That looks good. It's gonna be your front active safety features there and the camera. Lamborghini Raging Bull right there in the nose. Such a steep downturn nose. Look at this. And drop off. Sharp. A beak, if you will. I don't particularly love the front end design of the Urus. It doesn't do it for me. Again, could just be the paint color. White or black would be how I'd go, but it just doesn't, doesn't rock my world. Over here on the side, more carbon fiber details. These would normally be black gloss. Here, they are carbon fiber. And here's the fun part. So we have standard 22 inch wheels. These are the optional Nat, Nath, sorry, got the name wrong. Nath matte. So it's a matte finish, matte silvery finish. It's like $4,400 for these wheels, but 22s in their standard designs are, I just said that, redundant. Standard designs are standard 22s, but within them is so much fun. The largest production car brake rotors are here. So we've got 17.4 inch front rotors. They are carbon ceramics as standard, and then 10 piston front brake calipers. 10 piston. Might as well be all the pistons. The braking force right there within those wheels is astonishing. And just like, let's look, let's just take a peek here. It's a wide angle, so it's gonna be hard. But this is, that's my forearm. The rotors are the length of my forearm across. That's ridiculous. Man, those are some brakes. The tires, Pearly P0s, section 285 front and 325 rear, I believe. Oh, yeah. So just truly monstrous brakes. You see these in person, and if they weren't this kind of silver subdued color, they would actually scare me. An inanimate ob object would scare me. I don't know why, it's just impressive. Okay, so that lower carbon fiber package continues here. And here's something where I'm just like, ah, that seems like a waste of carbon fiber because you don't necessarily want your eyes to gravitate towards this somewhat unremarkable lower side sill piece. That should be black gloss. That's my thought. And then we've got this black gloss treatment here with the tricolore right in there, the Italian flag colors right there with some hexagonal shapes, all the shapes. Carbon fiber, this part of the carbon fiber, upper, lower, upper trim package for the mirror caps. That looks good, I'm fine with that. The black roof rails are $1,000 if you wanna paint it black. You can see the pano sunroof up there. Black gloss treatment for the windows. And as we step back, we can see just the, the crazy angles that they just cut up this design with just emphasizing the wheel arches. You can see the cuts there just make them pop out. Back there, the cuts just make it pop out. It's cool. It's cool. Again, not in this color. I I can't say that enough. I really have said it too many times already, but I can't say it enough. This strong character line, this corner here that juts out all the way into the back crease of the rear wheel arch, very pronounced. God, I just can't get over all the angles. And I know the supercars do the angles, but the, seeing it on an SUV for whatever reason just makes it stand out so much more. Going to the side, you see the flare of that rear wheel arch. Such a gradual slope to that rear glass. Look at how gently it just sort of 
meanders, meanders its way down. You can see the roof mounted spoiler right here. And now coming to the rear three quarters. I actually like the rear better than the front, I do. The profile is good and it just doesn't look like anything on the road and that's important, but the rear looks perfect to me. There's something about it I can't really place my finger on. I think it's the horizontal design lines and just the, the way it feels perfectly proportioned for the body. Coming to the back now, more of the lower carbon fiber package here. Lots of carbon fiber on that diffuser and the lower bumper piece. Quad exhaust ports are gonna be standard. These are a little bit dirty. I like that they're not oversized. You can see the inlets right there. The inlet outlet is gonna be maybe an inch or two different, but that's uh, it's almost subdued, but it looks right with the body. And then at the taillights, mimicking the headlight designs. We've got this coming across in that Y. Emphasizing the width with that long tail there. Carbon fiber upper means you're gonna get this lip spoiler in carbon fiber. You're gonna get the Lamborghini on a backing of carbon fiber. Maybe it's the carbon fiber in the blue that just doesn't do it for me. Not sure. What do you think? I wanna know what you think. Do you like the blue Elios with the carbon fiber? Is Do you think it's the pink color or is there something about the design you don't love? Looking at the back, wide presence, powerful stance. The back is right. The back is right for me. Front, don't necessarily love. I think it perhaps is too much, if you can say that about a Lamborghini. The rear three quarter and back are good. They're very good. It screams power without being just over saturating your body over saturating your body over saturating your mind with design that's my thought there is room left here for the performante or sv version of this vehicle that we know is going to happen there's room left in the design for perhaps the wheel arches to get even more flared for i don't know i think i think there's something here with the design that is going to look even better with that more extreme hardcore track focus model that is to come for sure okay that's it that's it for the exterior let's go to the interior uh one other option that we have on this car is a clear coat it's like three thousand something dollars for a clear coat protect that pink color that i'm not a huge fan of let's go inside and on our way in we'll note that we've got smart key access for these front and rear doors as standard so you can leave the key in your pocket pull on the handle to unlock to lock it you're going to put your thumb on that indent right there. Open up. Open up. And we're going to see we've got the Nero Ade leather color here. Black, clearly, for everyone else in the world. And some optional details, like this blue contrast stitching on the seats. And another option here is the embroidery of the Lamborghini crest, the Raging Bull on the headrest, all the headrests, not just the front ones. Blue contrast stitching on the floor mats is also going to be optional. And this, if you're going to go black leather interior, I like bringing the exterior color that Elios looks good on the inside. But here's why I wouldn't go with a black leather interior on this Urus. Urus. Got to correct myself now. It's because it reminds me too much of the Volkswagen Group vehicles that are also based on this platform. The RS, the Cayenne Turbo, the it's it's that german i don't know the black on metal finishes even carbon fiber says to me german whereas if you choose like the saddle brown color for example i've seen that on this interior it looks fantastic and for whatever reason distinguishes this cabin along with the design details that i'll get into in a second from those german vehicles because for one you're going to notice that leather is everywhere everywhere in here in black you're like what's leather what's plastic is this plastic no that's actually leather these are leather pieces the whole thing is leather all of it leather on the door panels i mean like it's crazy how much leather is here 
and you just don't notice there's leather on the, these are always plastic on cars. That is leather, that is leather. It's, I mean, it's nuts when you get into it, but you're not gonna really notice that when it's black. If it is a color, then you'll see the exquisite Italian leather, just not black. Okay, I'm not gonna rant too much about that. More options on this car right here. We have the panoramic sunroof, which I very much recommend because it brings in quite a bit of light to this cabin that is because of that slope of the roof, otherwise kind of dark. Not too dark because of that back window, and I'll get into more in a second, but panoramic sunroof, that's, a, that's kind of a must have for me in this vehicle. The details, as I've already talked about with all that leather, are just exquisite, and that is what distinguishes it from the other Volkswagen Group vehicles that share this platform. The leather, this carbon fiber interior trim is an option. It's like 2,800 bucks. Certainly not as much as the exterior carbon fiber. The Alcantara and the door inserts, really nice. This is real aluminum trim, don't you worry. Aluminum door handles, more of the geometric shapes, shapes here. So that is a hexagon, just like everything else on this cabin, which is kind of funny. In here, we've got the door switches. This is very nice material. Um, it is plastic, but it, it's got like a really soft texture to it, which is good. All one touch windows up down. Power tailgate releases down here. Again, plastic, but a nice texture. Memory seats, two position memory seats for the front. That blue contrast stitch continues on the door panel. And then this has the optional Bang & Olufsen 3D surround sound system with those cross markings, the Y crosses all throughout. That is a cool speaker cover and real aluminum. But man, that's cool. I love the design of that speaker cover. So rad. Another option on this car, is gonna be the carbon fiber tread plates here with that aluminum Lamborghini piece that it does illuminate at night. That's a carbon fiber piece I can kind of get behind. That's cool. The kick plates with the Y crosses, nice continuity, and on the brake and gas pedal. I kind of wish those, there were more, there was more aluminum on those. I get it, the rubber is supposed to be an SUV. You need grips for your feet and all that, but that's that. More carbon fiber as part of that package that runs along the dashboard. That blue contrast, stitching leather for the dashboard, for the upper dashboard, all leather, all the time. And multi-way adjustable power seats. Just heating is standard, and that's how we have it. We don't have optional ventilation here. I don't know if massaging is an option, but it's not on this one right here. And with that, let's jump in the cabin. Close the door. These are soft closed doors as standard, so I don't have to close it all that hard. And it takes care of the rest. To start the car, you get to lift the red cover and press this like a fighter jet, and it roars to life, and it gives you a little bit of an overrun every time you start it up. Super fun. Looking at the steering wheel, uh, by the way, the, the bings, the bongs of the car, the tones of the interior, straight Audi right there, just FYI. They don't change that at all. This steering wheel is an optional suede and leather trim wheel. This car is 8,800 miles on it. It's already pilling. Look at this. That's, uh, that's not good. I always, pretty much always get these cars and they're new or this pilling hasn't happened yet. And so it's not something that comes to mind. Here though, that's pretty much back to leather now. That is just, the, the suede has worn and pilled so much. It doesn't feel as cool on the hands, let's put it that way. But yeah, the, the steering wheel design, that's gonna be great for the first 8,000 miles. But then you go over that and uh, you're gonna have this. Luke contrast stitching, pardon me, on the wheel. It's real cool, I like the, the center marker on the wheel. The Lamborghini Crest is right there. That is gonna be not leather, I think that should be leather, in my opinion. It's everywhere else, why not there? Over the airbag cover. You wanna hear what the horn sounds like? There you go, that's what it sounds like. Those tweeters are super cool, just like Audi products, but yeah, they're still cool here in a Lamborghini. Alcantara headliner is gonna be standard. Ooh, look at that, speaker covers. Got the Y accent there too. Geometric shapes, more of that. Looking back at the wheel here, we are gonna notice, yes, more part sharing stuff. The view button, this scroll wheel, these toggles, that's straight out of Audi products. And indeed the fonts are going to look just like Audi's, 
except for that skin right there in the center that's all lamborghini their fonts uh their designs you'll see that mirrored across the huracan the aventador their products are going to have that distinction and it's here on the earth now if you do want to control what's on the right side of the screen you press the view button here short-term long-term memory g psi power and torque power torque again uh, this is probably for off-road applications. Power going to which wheel? It is an all-wheel drive system, of course, a standard. Fuel economy, not great. <laughs> Short-term fuel economy, not been good. Long-term, eh, better, 14. Okay, and then on the left side of the screen, you can control very similar things as we just saw on the right through the scroll wheel. Then you can toggle over to media information, smartphone, and navigation. Now, one distinction is that map is not going to be able to take over the full digital gauge cluster like it can in Audi vehicles. And just to address the sharing of parts and the sharing of technology for a quick sec, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it because Volkswagen and Audi have vetted this technology really, really well. So why not glean from their engineering efforts to make sure that you have functional, usable technology in your Lamborghini? Just because it's supposed to be Italian and exciting and fun doesn't mean it has to not work. So the fact that this stuff all works because it's shared with Audi vehicles doesn't bother me at all. I prefer it. And the build quality is going to be very good, but you're still going to have the flourishes in here. And that's kind of what I'm walking away with so far inside this cabin. And certainly the exterior doesn't look like any other SUV on the road. Whether you like it or not, it doesn't look like anything on the road. So that's that's where they, they collaborate here. And I don't want to conclude the review because I haven't done the driving impressions yet. But from the exterior and interior stuff, that's kind of what I'm pulling out of here. Yes, it has sharing with German vehicles. But the stuff they're sharing is all stuff you're going to want to use every single day. And that's okay. All right. So back to the wheel. On the right-hand side, we've got our volume controls. We have voice activation up here. Paddles. Hmm. Here's one thing I'm not loving. So the pilling on the wheel, choose a different all leather wheel, but the paddles, you're not going to be able to change. These are one stop shop. I like the designs. They're super cool and they're all aluminum, but they're on the wheel. And the problem I have with that is one, it's a Lamborghini and all Lamborghinis have them on the column, except for this one. But two, the functionality, they still make you go pull the right paddle to go into drive. I like that. I like the connection with the other Lambos. But the issue here with them being on the wheel is that if I'm backing up and I've cranked the wheel and I now need to go into drive, obviously there's not a control down here. So I'm going to go need to find the right paddle. Are you just instinctively going to know, oh, the right paddle's right over here within a fraction of a second? No, you might grab this one over here. And that's not going to do anything for you. If they were on the column, the paddles would be in those spots at all times. Now with the wheel cranked, I'm having to... Oh, my hands... Oh, okay, it's over here. Now I'm in drive. It's just functionally kind of an issue for me. I would much... Oh, oh start, stop, come on. Okay, there we go. Take your foot off the brake. Why start, stop is here? I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, that's my issue with the paddles. I like the design. They feel really good on the hands. There's not a ton of travel to them because honestly, it's a, it's a different um, paddle on that same mechanism from an Audi vehicle. Whereas Lamborghinis have these big paddles on the columns and there's huge travel and it's fun, it's engaging. These paddles just don't, they don't thrill me apart from how they look, they look cool. This straight Audi stuff for the turn signals and the turn signals are going to replace that Y of the LED um, daytime running light with amber turn signals. Your Some of your cruise control stuff is down here. This is where 2021 is going to bring adaptive cruise control and blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert as standard here. It is not standard, so this vehicle doesn't have the driver assistance package, so I don't have those features. Right, windshield wiper stock, just like the material. It's like a, it's a nice plastic material here, so no real issue with that. Looking more at the dashboard, more of that leather, more of that blue contrast stitch. That looks nice. The carbon fiber, didn't love it on the exterior, on the interior. I like it, looks good. The Lamborghini looks beautiful with a backing of leather here. And then this metal, real aluminum trim. 
what's cool about this stuff is if you look closely, there's a cross, it's like a knitted pattern to the metal. That's cool. Okay, the infotainment. This is gonna be shared again with Audi vehicles, but I'm okay with it. The splitting of the climate controls and shortcuts being down here. The geometric shapes, that's kind of fun. Um, that that is, you know, that's just the Lamborghini thing. And uh, so if you wanna create some shortcuts, you can bring them down here and then just have those readily accessible. I like that the start stop button stays permanently there unless you have the shortcut brought down so that when you want to turn that off, which you invariably do because it's just frustrating in a super SUV like this, uh, you can hit that button easily. The standard heated front seats, three-way, climate control is all in here. You can bring up some of the climate stuff to that front, there, this upper camera. And I like the haptic feedback from the controls. So it's not just a normal touch screen and you're like, I hope my input was received. This gives you haptic feedback letting you know that for sure, what you just asked it to do, it is computing. All right, down here, drag that down and you can see your Wi-Fi. It does come with a hotspot, a standard, and some of the other information up there. Take you to the home. And these, <laughs> again with the geometric shapes, they couldn't just leave it as squares or whatever. It had to be a geometric shape. Uh, this time it is a, is it, oh, it's an octagon. Look at that, it's not a hexagon. Those are two more points. So it is an octagon. Inside the octagon, we have radio. Oh, that's terrible, Miles. Why? Media, telephone, navigation. Navigation is going to be standard. And it's pretty good. Perhaps not the absolute latest, but it's pretty good. No wireless Apple CarPlay in Android Auto. You do have to plug in. Inside the Urus, you're going to get the. You can. Here's where you can look at the Anima definitely probably pronounced that wrong, but here are all your drive modes. You can check out the graphics for each of the drive modes. So Strata, you know, just street, sport, oh, maybe a canyon road back there, Corsa, racetrack, of course, Neve, snow, and then Ego, your individual mode, where you can then adjust, oh, interesting the background there is like city lights. You can individually adjust traction control, handling, and ride quality. For the rest of the things that you'll adjust in Ego, you're gonna have to go to this right. This whole setup here is awesome. This is mechanical and fun and cool. Big points, big props to Lamborghini for this. This is just, it's fun. It's fun to pull the Anima and go into each individual drive mode. Now, uh, just quick point, no, okay. Pause for a second, I'll go back to that in a sec. Ego, uh, to continue my thought, please, Miles, you have the, this will just turn on Ego mode and bring up all the settings that you put in individual. These buttons here go the step further to adjust not just the ride quality and the traction and all that, but the powertrain. One of three adjustments you can have smooth, medium, or sportive. Love that. Sportive. Sounds like a translation issue. Steering, same, smooth, medium, sportive, and suspension, smooth, medium, sportive. So you can adjust these and have it go into that with the ego setting. Pull that toggle, it'll bring up all of your last settings for that. This leather piece, awesome. I just love how giant the reverse grab is. That's fun. That's cockpit, cockpit stuff right there. Cockpit, I'm <laughs> not gonna touch that one. Not gonna touch that one. That is your reverse, uh, like a cockpit. And then I showed you the start stop under that, just like all Lamborghini vehicles, that's cool. Park is there. Manual mode is on the other side. Press that, and now you're just gonna use the paddles. Now, finally, we can get to the drive modes over here. So Ferrari has Manatino, Lamborghini has Anima. And here we can see we've got four drive modes, plus the Ego makes it five. If this vehicle had the optional off-road package, we would get two more drive modes. So in addition to Strata, Sport, Corsa, Neve, we would also have Sabia for sand, probably said the wrong Sabia, maybe, and then Terra for dirt or gravel. This one doesn't have that, can't raise the suspension as high, doesn't have the additional drive modes. But that is Anima, and you pull the toggle back to go between each mode. You can't press forward, you can only go back. So if you miss it, you're gonna have to toggle down a few more to get it. Carbon fiber down through here, and ooh, press this button, and it'll bring up the 360 bird's eye view that is an option on this car, as is the head-up display, by the way, didn't mention that one, head-up display. 
There we go. But the 360 view is gonna make sure you don't go crunch crunchy on stuff. And here we'll see all the different views, wide front, narrow, overhead, in a different overhead than that one. Narrow back, wide back. You can see the AC compressor is going ham right now. Front two wheels side, back two wheels side. Then we also have 3D, and 3D will allow me to drag this camera anywhere around the car I want. Check out my parking job, make sure I'm in the lines. Am I? Oh, wow, well, that was pretty close over there, Miles. Oh, good thing no one's in the parking lot. It's okay. And ah, this I didn't show here. <laughs> this is kind of a nuisance. So much dust collects in here. I've already cleaned this once, and dust just collects in this clear plastic piece here. Blank switches, traction control, hazards, uh, the HVAC to, to defroster front, defroster rear. Why well, I couldn't think of the name of that, I'm not sure. And then these real aluminum pieces here, carbon fiber trim, but yeah, this just, I want here, here I want Lamborghini to distinguish itself a little more with those toggles that you get in the Huracan, the Aventador. I want that here. I don't want blank switches that I tab. That, that was kind of a cop out for me. And the dust collection is for real. All right, moving back. So parking brake right in here, showed you the parking views. That is your auto hold. Love that that's on a vehicle like this because it's just useful. Um, your active safety stuff, you can set up how extreme or how not extreme you want it to be. Distance warning, pre-collision basically. Um, and I think it pre-tensions the seat belts. Carbon fiber trim goes in here. The metal surrounds look more hexagonal shapes. Here's your Lamborghini key. This, just like the steering wheel, is a little beat up. We got the raging bolt at the bottom, and we've got black plastic. I want a better key, honestly, but it's like the other Lamborghini key, so that's okay. Lamborghini on the back, and yeah, it's just kind of an Audi key with Lamborghini on the bottom. Okay, so in here, blue contrast stitch continues on this. This is all leather, of course, all leather all the time. That's good. Open this up. Wireless smartphone charging, that is gonna be standard. That's good news. Oh, I didn't mention you have ambient lighting in here. That's like a 30 something hundred dollar option. So you better really like your ambient lighting. Go to lights and vision, interior lighting, and here are all your color options. And they are in Italian. So you just have to look at the colors if you aren't sure. much now there you go blue and ego there you can customize you can customize the top line color from the bottom line and this is where you can actually go in and choose whatever color of the 32 options i think you get 30 options that you want so there's your ambient lighting i'll show you some night view of that because it looks way better at night and looking up showed you the alcantara let's look at the sun visor situation here this is all in alcantara that's good that you're not going to touch quite as much as the steering wheel so hopefully it won't peel that quickly sliding visor come on there we go no sliding visor i meant mirror visor no sliding visor that's a bummer frameless rear view mirror and then your lights just touch it to turn on panoramic roof you can close the sunshade here, which is going to take a minute. Do, 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 do. Wanted to do that to show you that no light comes through. Okay. Okay. That you are going to get a nice wind deflector there. And it does go, ah, not that far back. So that's as far back as it goes. Yeah, all right. So not too big of a sunroof opening and it does tilt as well, but it's getting long in the two. So let's go to the back seats, see what we've got going on here. This is important. It is an SUV. You need practicality. So let's see. Door opening. These are also soft closed doors in the rear. That's important. Note that, you know, it doesn't swing crazy wide, but it does leave you enough room to get in fairly easily. Same materials on the back as you're going to find on the front. So that leather all over the place, the Alcantara, more leather, leather all the way down here, the rad Bang & Olufsen's speedy, speedy? <laughs> speaker covers. Say that's speedy, would you? 
you're on one today, dude. Uh, the aluminum cover there, the carbon fiber option there. Leather, 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 more leather. Yes, I mean, seriously, they decked it out. And again, if this was in a different color, you would really notice that, but it kind of just blends in in black. Back of the seats, all leather, except for this. This is soft, nice plastic, so that's okay. The seats themselves, more with the optional contrast stitch of the blue. Again, if you're gonna go black, bring in that blue contrast stitch. The Lamborghini on the headrest, squishy, nice headrest. The Alcantara, the panoramic center. Let's hop in, shall we? Shall we? Hop in, because I want to show you how much room I have back here. It's actually pretty impressive. Six feet tall behind my own driving position, and I can really stretch out my legs. There you go, put your envelopes in there. And I can even tilt the seat back just a tiny bit to give me more headroom, and already I have headroom. Look at this, I have headroom. Um, okay, that's with the seat back, let's pull it up. Let's be fair. I have, uh, okay, I have half an inch of headroom, but I am six feet tall and I have a longer torso. So having headroom is really not common for me in SUVs. And here I have some, that's important, but the leg room is substantial. That's great. I've got, you know, maybe five inches of knee room there. Big foot pockets, very important. So you can decrease that knee angle. You can really feel comfortable back here. The only thing I'll say is the seat backs are so wide that my view of the front is pretty, you know, I'm, I'm really gonna have to be craning around here and you hope you don't have anyone in this middle seat, which they could fit. It's a genuine five seater. You can't have a, a wow, brain fart. You can't have a four seater configuration or five. This one has the five, but with that being the case, you hope that someone's not there because you're not gonna really get a view of the road. You get a lot of seat back. That's the only thing I'll say. Down here we have, if that was on, oh, the car's turned itself off. You have your own climate control. Burp. Ah, they have life, okay. You've got your own climate control. So quad-zone climate control is standard in this car. So everyone who's sitting here, unless you've got a fifth passenger, gets their own climate settings. These are touch, they don't have haptic feedback but they do make that sound so you know it's being received. And this is kind of funny, DC outlets. Not USBs, not USB-Cs, DC sockets. That needs to be updated, just uh, my thoughts. But you can put a converter in there. It just feels odd in a vehicle like this. Center console, pull that down. All leather, of course, except for the plastic piece right here. Press that, you've got a couple cup holders, and this can be a pass-through. Actually, I think, the whole seat has to fold down. You press this button, yes, and then, then you can pass that through for a 60 or 40 20 40 split folding. That's what that is. This is what that cockpit looks like from the back. Pretty neat if I could see it, but I see a seat back. And then the panoramic sunroof, let's point out where it stops right here. My head, if we're looking right there, is going to be there. So you're going to have a lot of roof, and the pano is going to stop there. But not the end of the world. Because you have this back window, it brings in enough light. The panel helps, but as does, I'm sure they, they worked with this. They were like, how far do we make that back window go back? That was a good decision, making it go back that far so this person doesn't feel like they're in a cave. And looking at the visibility, I'll get into this while I'm driving, of course, but uh, it's a pretty narrow back window because of the gentle slope. But the C-pillar isn't crazy big because they went back pretty far with that glass. So we got legroom, we got headroom. That's all good. Let's check out the trunk and wrap this up because again, it's getting long here. Opening this back up, I'm gonna have to list for you the cargo space behind the second row of seating and then with the seats folded flat. I think it's like 22 and 56 off the top of my head, probably wrong, but who knows. It's a decent sized cargo area. It's not the best in class, but it's decent. And again, this is a Lamborghini. So you have cargo space in your Lamborghini. This is nice, the Alcantara up here with a blue contrast stitching, like that they continued that. Very easy to pull this out. Or put it back. Uh, they can do it one handed, look at that. Look, Ma, no, nope. uh, did I? <laughs> did it, all right, I brought it. Okay, uh, you have your suspension raising and lowering to make it easier to lower uh, to 
lift in objects here. So I can press that and it's gonna lower on down. Now it's gonna take a sec. Now it's pretty darn low. It's gonna be very easy to lift up suitcases and things like that. You can raise it with the same button. What you do not have that I would love to see, it's not here and I don't even know if it's an option because uh, I'm pretty sure these blank panels are for like the, to, what is it? Toe hitch? No, maybe that's European. Maybe there are options um, not equipped on this vehicle for power folding that second row of seating because back here there aren't even manual releases. So you have to go around again, pull up this tab and fold them down. And it doesn't completely go flat, by the way. So you have to do that on either side. Then you'll have the full 50 something cubic feet of space but I'm just upset that I have to go and do that. It feels wrong in a vehicle that as tested is $270,000. feels wrong to have to do that much manual work. But there you go. That is the interior and exterior of the Lamborghini Urs. And with that, it's time to hop in, turn it on again, because stop, start. for a drive but hold on a second wait can't go anywhere i almost forgot the make it or break it detail of this Uras cabin does it pass the big bottle test let's see front cup holders show me what you got not the capacity for this that's for sure center console that is gonna be way too shallow it does have two usb ports that i did forget to mention and an sd card slot but it doesn't have the depth for a big bottle how about this cubby under the infotainment with its own DC charging ports. Two more of those, interesting choice. Oh, that looks good. Yes, and it even has a lip there. So, well, I just pulled it out, but it should be harder for the bottle to go sliding off. And you know what? Let's just rack them up. Let's keep going. Oh, door pocket. Yes, two spots for our big bottle in the Lamborghini Urs. And I mean, glove box. We don't have that's a big glove box wow i mean if the manual wasn't in there it might fit in there too but hey we're stopping here because the lamborghini urs passes the big bottle test now we can now we can rev up and go It scared it out of me. Let's go. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> I don't have anything else to say. That is so fast. That is so, so fast. Um, okay, well, let's talk about the engine. It's a four liter twin turbo V8. And yes, it is shared with some other Volkswagen Auto Group vehicles but none of them are tuned like this. 641 horsepower, 627 pound-feet of torque. That is connected to an eight-speed automatic gearbox, sending power to all four wheels permanently. And uh, yeah, if you uh, do it right with the launch control system, which we'll do at some point during this, you'll hit 60 miles an hour in. Lamborghini quotes 3.6 seconds. Everyone else is seeing faster. They're seeing low three-second range, maybe even like three on the dot if you do it just perfectly and the conditions are right and your tires are warm and all that. But that's just, uh, that's crazy. And then also crazy is the fact that if you keep your foot in it, you'll see 190 miles an hour fastest production SUV. That's bragging rights. It's also going to be something you're gonna to have to share because two other Volkswagen Auto Group vehicles have the same top speed, the Audi RS Q8 and the Bentley Bentayga Speed. So yeah, you have to share, but you know what? <laughs> I've driven the Bentayga Speed. It doesn't feel like this. It feels a bit too removed from the outside world. This is in it and exciting. Uh, and then I haven't driven the RSQ8s, but I will in two weeks and I'll have more thoughts then. But from what I've heard, it's, it's not even a light duty Urs. It's, it's one step even further down from that. Again, we'll see in a couple weeks when I drive it. 
Uh, but yeah, this is, this is fast. This is very fast. Um, this transmission is shared with the RSQ8, but the tuning is different. And from what I've heard of the RSQ8, it won't like hold gears even in its most dynamic setting. And it, it shifts are a little slow. And I kind of can relate because I drove the SQ8, not the RSQ8. And I did feel that. I was like, uh, it's just not quite as exciting and fast as I want it to be. This is not that. These shifts are fast uh, in auto mode or in manual mode, doesn't matter. And then manual mode, it'll just, it'll hold it however long you want it. In Corsa mode, it'll really hold those gears. It acts like you're on a racetrack and you do not want to upshift mid-corner on a racetrack. Whee, let's take this corner. Mm, slingshot. Uh, and I've been in sport mode this whole time, by the way. In Corsa mode, it gets even louder. Ooh, let's try these brakes at this stoplight. Mmm. Mm. Wow. They're big and they're powerful and they work. Uh, let's do launch control now. So we'll go into Corsa mode, press the traction control button once, which means I turn off the ESC, hold the brake, Matt the throttle, 2500 RPM, let go! Oh! Oh! It's that kick from second to third, it's like, wow! That's fun. That's a lot of fun, just like mid-range power. That's really, really fun. Okay, anyway, so now I'm in course mode. I'm gonna put the track control back on because I don't trust myself. Uh, and you can hear it's louder. It's louder, it's more exciting. And it sounds, despite the fact that it's forced induction and an eight cylinder, not a 10 or a 12 like other Lamborghinis, it sounds very Lamborghini. It's distinctive in that way. They tune this really nicely, the exhaust note really nicely. Uh, yeah, anyway, the, the transmission is great. The shifts are fast. The problem I have is that it's not the same kind of like Huracan, Huracan, however you say it, um, engagement factor because you don't have the paddles in the column. They're not big and the travel of the paddles is pretty small. We're gonna do a turning radius test here. Let's see how it is. How it is. It's tight. It's tight from that four wheel steering system. Turn those rear wheels in the opposite direction and you get tighter turning radius and then stability at speed. Um, yeah, but the transmission is good. Um, it just isn't quite as engaging as a Huracan with those big call mounted paddles. It's an SUV though, it's okay. And then the steering is very dialed. My kind of barometer here is like Porsche Cayenne Turbo all the way at the top with air tuning of the electronic steering rack in that vehicle. And this one is pretty good. You get a real sense of what the tires are doing and it's not overweighted artificially so there's a lot of wind noise outside i just want to let you know so you're not judging this cabin insulation because cabin insulation here is sensational especially given what i'm seeing happening with trees like full-grown powerful trees swaying in the wind right now um it's pretty impressive how good this cabin insulation is okay anyway so the driving dynamics are phenomenal and we can thank things like that four-wheel steering system we have electronically controlled active anti-roll bars torque vectoring rear differential uh, limited slip center differential and then we have adaptive dampers and an air suspension system as standard all of that mean that this takes a corner like an suv should not and i i realize that's been said of other vehicles and yeah and i've even said that i think of like the x5m competition but this is like this is kind of another level. It's one step up from those because it, it feels like a sports car. Not a supercar perhaps in a corner, but a sports car in a corner. And that's impressive for being this high off the ground and weighing this much. But beyond the performance madness, how is the Urus as a luxury vehicle? Well, to find out, I'm gonna take it and put it into strata mode here on the Anima, or I could go into Ego where I've calibrated the powertrain and the steering feel and the chassis to be more comfortable, but I'm gonna just do Strata. And let's see, is it more subdued? Granted, I just <laughs> throttled out hard from that corner there, but is it more subdued? Well, certainly in terms of the exhaust note, that has been quieted considerably. The ride quality is, I mean, it was already great in Corsa and Sport, but here it's even more solid. I am on a very flat, smooth road, but uh, I have driven it before just this moment on rougher roads and it was really very, very nice. The quietness of the cabin is still here despite all the wind going on outside. This is, this is a solid luxury vehicle. This, 
the seats are very comfortable as well. That was one thing I was thinking of. Uh, they look very flat and hard, but in fact are very comfortable. I wish I had massaging and cooling as standard in the Urus, but you do have to pay extra for those. But they are options for extra monies. Lots of extra monies. Uh, a couple things I am missing here that you do get for 21. It's gonna be your standard adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assist and all your active safety features. But again, 21 brings those for an extra 10 grand as your starting price rises for 21. So I would do without them and get them for 2020. Or again, options list. You can still add them in as options. But yes, as a luxury vehicle, this is shockingly good. Perhaps almost too good, like too refined for a Lamborghini when you're not crazy on it. I'll get to that in a second. Okay, but let's think about the competition here. So for $211,000, that's your starting price for the Urus. And uh, one thing I did forget to mention there is the fuel economy is just garbage. It's really, really not good. 12 city, 17 highway, 14 combined. Twin turbo V8, 14 combined in this day and age is not the best. I'll give you points for that, or uh, I, I will tell you why that is so bad with the competition. So the Aston Martin DBX starts at $193,000, so lower than this. It makes 542 horsepower, so not as much as this, uh, about 99 horsepower less than this, in fact. And the zero to six time is going to suffer. It's gonna be 3.8 seconds. Top speed is gonna be 181 miles an hour. Uh, all less impressive stats than the Urus, um, but its fuel economy is 16 combined MPG. And that's important because even if you can afford all the fuel, having to make those trips to the fuel station is not gonna be as fun. You have heard the start-stop start system is on with the Strata mode. I can turn it off with just the press of a button here on the center display. Then there is the Bentley Bentega Speed. That's gonna cost $245,000, so a higher starting price than this, but it makes a little less power from its W12, 626 horsepower, zero to 60 is gonna be 3.9 seconds. So slower this, top speed is gonna be tied, 190 miles an hour, and the fuel economy is going to tie this. A W12 has the same fuel economy as a <laughs> v twin turbo V8. So 14 combined FPG for that. Then. We'll get to the Germans, and I'm not gonna do the full spread, the X5M Comp, the Mercedes-AMG GLE 63S, and the RSQ8. I'm just gonna talk about the RSQ8 because it is a stable mate of the Urus, and you have to decide whether, you know, for almost $100,000 less. So that's $115,000 for the RSQ8 if it's worth the sacrifice to power. So that car only makes 100, or 591, 100, no, 591 horsepower and it gets to 60 in 3.8 to 3.9 seconds. It's slower than this. Its top speed is tied, 190 miles an hour, and the fuel economy is better than this. It's gonna be 17 combined MPG compared to 14, despite it being the same engine, the tuning makes this have such terrible fuel economy. So that's your spread right there. Really, it's it's kind of the, the low 100s or basically the low 200s, Aston Martin being the, ex the exception there. Does the Lamborghini feel worth it? Well, to answer that, I've been thinking to myself, well, first, does this feel like a Lamborghini? It is certainly the Lamborghini of SUVs. Nothing handles like this. Nothing thrills you quite as much as this. Nothing looks like this on the road uh, as SUV goes, as SUVs go. So I think that it is the Lamborghini of SUVs. Is it a Lamborghini still? Yes. But I say that with a little less confidence because uh, I feel like the essence of Lamborghini is here when you're on it. When you're really, really on it, this car comes alive and it feels like a Lamborghini. When you're not, which is probably 99% of how you're gonna drive this vehicle, it doesn't necessarily feel like a Lamborghini. You get the looks, you definitely get the looks. People wanna know uh, who is driving the Urus because it's expensive and it's pretty radical looking. Um, but I mean, the, the refinement is almost too much so. There's an element of crazy to every Lamborghini at any speed, and I don't know if that's here in its full measure. Uh, I'm holding out hope that the Performante or the SV version of the Urus that is no doubt to come will add in that little extra bit to really make it feel like a Lamborghini. Because right now I'm getting the essence of Lamborghini, not the full effect. Unless I'm on it, again, unless I'm on it. If I'm on it, this is 
very much a Lamborghini uh, in SUV form. So that is my conclusion. Would I go with it for my $200,000 in black with black wheels? Perhaps, because it's just, it's stealth and it's awesome uh, in black and nothing drives like this as an SUV. And that's where I'm gonna leave you. Uh, did launch control, I did full throttle acceleration, talked about all the interior and exterior goodness. So check those out if you didn't watch those, if you skipped ahead to the driving impressions. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you in the RSQ8 perhaps next. See ya.